Welcome to the 15th episode of Histo Helpers. My name is Joseph Nadler, and I'm here to walk you through the urinary system. The objectives for today are to understand the organization of the urinary system, including the functions of the various parts, demonstrate an ability to recognize histologically the renal cortex, medulla, calyces, pyramids, and renal papillae, ureter, and bladder. And by the end of today, you should have an understanding of the nephron, juxtaglomerular cells, and mesangular cells. We will start today with slide 140, which is a section of kidney stained with H&E. The kidney is the first part of the urinary system and functions to filter the blood for the purpose of excretion of metabolic waste. It is also crucial for water and electrolyte homeostasis and acid-base balance. The kidney has a darker staining cortex, seen here spanned by the green line, and a lighter staining medulla, spanned here by the yellow line. The cortex stains darker due to, the, due to greater blood flow. Zooming in, we can see the connective tissue capsule at the blue arrow. We have zoomed in on a different section of the slide so we can identify the renal lobule, seen here spanned by the green line. The renal lobule is composed of a central medullary ray and one half of the cortical labyrinth on either side. The medullary ray is a collection of straight tubules and collecting ducts radiating into the cortex. It is seen here spanned by the orange line. The cortical material, or labyrinth, is divided equally between two adjacent renal lobules and can be seen here spanned by the yellow lines. Renal lobules have interlobular arteries and veins running between them. We have zoomed in on the cortex to observe the renal corpuscle, circled here in green. Please note that the renal corpuscle is only found in the cortex. The renal corpuscle is composed of the glomerular capillary network, Bowman's capsule, podocytes, and mesangial cells. The glomerulus, seen here at the black arrow, is a network of fenestrated capillaries which allows for filtration of blood. Bowman's capsule actually has two layers, a visceral and parietal layer. The parietal layer, seen here at the blue arrow, is composed of simple squamous epithelium and functions to hold the filtrate in the nephron. The visceral layer of Bowman's capsule is composed of podocytes, which along with the endothelial cells of the glomerular capillaries and the glomerular basement membrane, form the filtration system of the renal corpuscle. This filtration barrier allows mainly small and positively charged molecules to pass through the, into Bowman space, which is seen here at the yellow arrow. Bowman space is located between the parietal and visceral layers of Bowman's capsule and is the collection point for ultrafiltrate. We have moved to a different section to better visualize the vascular and urinary poles of the renal corpuscle. The renal corpuscle has a vascular pole at the green arrow and a urinary pole opposite the vascular pole at the black arrow. At the vascular pole, we can see afferent and efferent arterioles, though they are difficult to distinguish and not readily seen. Blood enters the glomerulus through the afferent arteriole and exits through the efferent arteriole which then goes on to supply the tubules of the nephron. We can also see juxtaglomerular cells, a portion of the afferent arteriole here at the blue arrow. Juxtaglomerular cells are responsible for the production of renin in response to low blood pressure. Renin converts angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 then passes through the heart and lung where it is converted to angiotensin 2 by ACE or angiotensin converting enzyme. Angiotensin II then cause the, causes the release of ADH and aldosterone, which act at the distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct to increase water absorption. Macula densa cells are seen here at the yellow arrow. They are a thickened portion of the distal convoluted tubule. This acts as a sodium concentration sensor which can activate the renin-angiotensin system if needed. Macula densa cells, juxtaglomerular cells, and Lassi cells, which we will discuss later, make up the juxtaglomerular apparatus. The urinary pole, seen here at the black arrow, is opposite the vascular pole, where the ultrafiltrate will flow from Bowman's space 
into the proximal convoluted tubule. Proximal convoluted tubules, seen here at the orange arrow, have a characteristic star-shaped lumen with a poorly preserved brush border and cuboidal epithelium. These are the bulk absorbers of the nephron. We can also see the distal convoluted tubules here at the pink arrow. These are for fine tuning of absorption and do not have a brush border. They also have cuboidal epithelium. The proximal convoluted tubules greatly outnumber the distal convoluted tubules. Moving into the medullary array, we can see the collecting tubules of the nephron here at the blue arrows. These have a cuboidal epithelium and are very similar to distal convoluted tubules in appearance. Location is what will allow you to differentiate between the two. Further down in the medulla, we can find the collecting ducts of the nephron, here at the blue arrow. These will have a simple cuboidal epithelium as well. As we move further down, we can see a transition into a columnar epithelium, which demarcates a shift into the papillary ducts, seen here at the yellow arrow. Papillary ducts are located within the renal papilla. The papillary ducts then empty into the minor calyx, seen here at the green arrow. The minor calyx will have urothelium, or transitional epithelium, which have characteristic dome-shaped or umbrella-shaped cells. We have now moved to slide 141, which is a section of kidneys stained with toluidine blue which has an extremely high affinity for acidic components of tissue. Again, we can find the renal corpuscle, circled here in orange. This stain allows us to identify the cell types located within the renal corpuscle. Here, we can see the simple squamous epithelium of the parietal layer of Bowman's capsule, here at the pink arrow. We can also identify podocytes, here at the green arrows. These extend their processes around the capillaries, and develop secondary processes known as pedicles. The spaces between the pedicles are filtration slits. We can also see mesangial cells here at the yellow arrows. Mesangial cells are the supporting cells of the glomerulus. They function to support the glomerular capillaries, act as phagocytic cells to keep the glomerular basement membrane clean, and secrete molecules in response to injury. Mesangial cells can also be found in the juxtaglomerular apparatus, where they are known as Lacey cells. Outside of the renal corpuscle, we can again find the proximal convoluted tubules, seen here at the red arrows, and the distal convoluted tubules, seen at the brown arrows. With this stain, we can see the brush border of the proximal convoluted tubule well preserved. Slide 145 is a section of the lower ureter stained with H&E. The mucosal layer of the ureter consists of transitional epithelium, seen here at the green arrow, which is a key identifying characteristic of urinary epithelium. Recall that urothelium consists of dome or umbrella-shaped cells. Additionally, we can find the lamina propria in the mucosa, spanned by the orange line. In the lower ureter, there are three layers of the muscularis, the inner longitudinal, middle circular, and outer longitudinal, spanned by the blue, yellow, and black lines respectively. Please note that in the upper ureter, there is no outer longitudinal layer of the muscularis. For review, make sure you practice identifying serosa and adventitia on this slide. Our final slide of the day is slide 258 which is a section of the urinary bladder stained with H&E. Here we can see the urothelium, or transitional epithelium, at the green arrow. The lamina propria is spanned here by the orange line, and the smooth muscle layer is spanned by the blue line. The smooth muscle in the bladder is known as the detrusor muscle, which when contracted forces urine into the urethra. The detrusor muscle is under the control of the parasympathetic nervous system. That's all for this episode of Pistol Helpers. Join us next time for an arousing look at the male reproductive system with our very own Brock Ashley. Thanks for watching Pistol Helpers. As always, we're here to help. You.